All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. The conversation begins right now. We'd like to hear your views on the leadership and integrity conversation that we're going to have. It's a state of the nation of some sorts. Ten days of the elections. We'd like to hear your thoughts on the kind of leader that you should elect and what exactly you're looking for. At Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV, can you use the hashtag Daybreak? Bishop Alfred Rotich is here from the Catholic Conference of Catholic Bishops. Is here KCCB also from Kericho, and also a member of the Dialogue Reference Group that is tasked to talk about political issues and ensure leadership and integrity in the country. Mark Bichachi is also here, communication strategist. Asante Sana for making time. Dennis Dumbi, the governance expert, is joining us online from Eldoret. Thank you so much for making time as well. Let's start off with the dailies here. And there's a very glaring headline from the Daily Nation. IBC calls for talks. Let's start from there. A visit by political party agents to Athens, Greece, to supervise printing of election material has raised questions on the supply of extra presidential results declaration forms that the Ruto and Raila camp want answers to. An IBC chairperson of Funda Chabukati has called a meeting today with the presidential candidates to address the fears surrounding the statutory meeting, the, the document that led to nullification of the presidential vote in 2017. And Bishop, I'll start with you on this because I saw you during the Religious Leaders and National Elections Forum mm. taking actual videos of this. Were you convinced of this explanation by the IBC before they even meet the presidential candidate? Yes, I'm convinced okay. that they are making, uh, they have already done uh, some percentage of preparation and which we are happy, but we continue to ask them to increase their optics, especially to be present to the media, to the people, to explain what is it that they are talking about. Because uh, the mystery around it is that many people don't understand when they talk about, say, for example, even how to vote. Yet they know how to, they want to vote. Yeah. But when they are taken through the, the process, then they can understand. I think this moment is uh, the moment for IBC really and you find that they are calling for talks, yeah. is for me a positive uh, way of asking people, let's come together mm. and talk. Let's not be uh, spreading uh, what you call rumors or anything, so that the perception of the people and the confidence that we are building from the uh, ground is that IBC is a referee and needs now to be given time uh, to monitor and also to increase volume, and I say again, optics, so that yeah. the people may have a, a really a safe path mm -hmm. and access on which to uh, elect their leaders. Yeah. So we personally, and I think from the plenary, we see that uh, more than before, they have done really uh, good work. Yeah. It will be better, and I think the, the test of the soup is on when they release the results. Yeah, but should they have waited to be jolted to into this before before they just come out and say this is what's going on? Why did they have to wait until they've been asked by the presidential candidates for a meeting? Now it looks like they're reacting to that rather than being ahead of the game. No, I think towards elections, many people are anxious. Mm. And I think IBC is trying to manage the anxiety and they are raising issues that would have even, in fact, not the IBC, but the political parties, would have even taken the first route yeah. to the IBC and say, what are you doing? But now, because they have found maybe a group that were found at JKA, and then now it triggered some of the uh, questions. Yeah. And Basically, they are right at this moment to ask those questions, but I think the right place to do is to have a sitting, like what we are doing this morning, and discuss with sobriety. So I think uh, what we are asking the uh, IABC, and it is uh, good to do so, is to increase the volume of their presence in the media and to speak about it on a daily basis other than waiting for people to ask those questions. Okay. Yes. I'll come to you and find out what has came up of the Religious Leaders uh, National Elections Conference, mm -hmm. what are the issues that stood out for you. But Mark, the, we are facing a situation where we're just 10 days to the polls, and there are several questions that are coming out. In fact, uh, yesterday, I think Commissioner Moll was mentioning that some of it is emanating from ignorance. But at this point in time, is there a process we're supposed to be second-guessing? 
from well, the IBC. You know, Trevor, we were right on this show and when we talked about transparency and how IBC needs to be understood yeah. to be an institution that is not only doing the right thing but must be transparently doing so. Now, um, let's take the issue of this Form 34s and there being uh, another book that complete with security features similar to the first book with serial numbers, ETC. You know, <laughs> it is difficult for you to buy that this is a copy uh, uh, that is going to be given to observers. And the reason why I'm saying that is it's just given the natural order by which human beings do things. If you give me two pieces of paper and ask me to hand copy um, number one to number one, number two to number two, the probability of human error becomes greater. Why? Because it is easy to assume 10,000 is 1,000, 10,000 is 100,000, and such mistakes have happened even when people were copying down copies of the Bible. Therefore, I do not understand why the IEBC would then create two books when there is a very ancient technology that was created. It's called the carbon copy. Right? Why not just simply carbon copy this uh, document so that when you create one, when you write one form 34, everybody signs and there's three copies. And we know the first copy is white, the second copy is yellow, the third copy is green. These things have been done before. It is not necessary to create an extra document. But the problem is not that they created an extra document. It is that they did not inform political parties in time that they've created a secondary document. And this is the trans transparency I'm talking about. And as long as there is no transparency, uh, the, the trust level uh, 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 of Kenyans uh, towards the IEBC is low. And it's not just a function of them mistrusting Chebukati. It is also a function of the history they've suffered. Remember, the Mlolongo system was not trusted. Remember the elections of 1997. Mwai Kibaki did not trust the results. So we have a lot of history where the electoral body has let us down. And if you have such a history, then it behooves you again to go back to the, to the, to the, to, to the drawing board yeah. and overshare information. Uh, uh, tell people, be liberal with your information. Otherwise, yeah. uh, the, from where I sit, uh, that uh, an extra copy of Form 34s is obviously yeah. a platform upon which, if I was running for office, I would create a, a, a separate Form 34 so that by the time IBC is receiving it in bombers. There are three copies of this thing that I have generated. Yeah. And we need to understand, we cannot trust our politicians. Which politician can you trust with the two books that they can fill forms in? You know, we, we also need to a bit, be a bit realistic. And I'm not doing this to be alarmist, and it is critical that as we go into the election, we have a lot of trust in the IEBC. But yeah. that trust is also gathered by them allowing us to ventilate on issues, to discuss issues, so that there's a degree of satisfaction going into the election. And IEBC Tafadhali, if you're listening to me, please overshare. It, there's nothing wrong in telling us exactly how many forms, how many books. Yeah. And, and, and this idea of saying that a document is auto-generated, what is this machine that is auto-generating these documents? How is it automatically generated? Is it going to be someone writing one plus one plus one plus one on a paper? What yeah. exactly is going? What is auto generated? Right? What what happens? Is it that the form thirty four A's when they are filled suddenly form thirty four B will appear? What do you mean? Okay. And, and these are the mm -hmm. questions they need to answer. All because right. to the lay person, I can tell you, if it is going to be auto-generated, Otto might be a guy working for, for Roots Party, and <laughs> Otto can write it very well. Okay, let me bring in Dennis on this. And Dennis, Dennis, is there a point of concern here? Or are we just splitting hairs? Uh, Trevor, good morning. And uh, good morning, Mark and uh, uh, Bishop uh, Rotich. Um, indeed, it's a good day. Uh, Trevor, and, and good morning, viewers. Trevor, one of the things that we suffer in this country is a trust deficit. We have a serious trust deficit in this country, and that's the reason why we have one of the most expensive elections um, in the world. And even the fact that we have thrown money uh, to try and medicate on the trust deficit, we have not gone to the great monarch of heaven. 
and ask God to change our hearts that we may be able to trust each other and at the end of the day deploy integrity in every area, especially in the area of governance and many other areas. So essentially what happens when IBC does something, we then consult on or lean on the understanding of the trust deficit. And the first thing we do is we accuse them in the salons, we accuse them in the barbershop, we accuse them in the buses, and then we come to the media and say, look at this guy, look, you know, I thought he was going uh, to wear a blue cap, you know, now he's wearing yellow, you know, he's supposed to wear white. And then after that, then we go and talk to IBC, and then we're like, oh, you should have said. So this is it, you know. And also, given the fact that uh, we have trust deficit, then as a nation, we don't work as a united force mm. to be able then to acquire the gains of democracy and advance democracy and advance what it is that we call the common good. Now, what IBC is trying to medicate is that technical incapacity that comes with the nature of our elections and uh, the, the issue of funding. Why am I saying this? The reason why they had to print additional from uh, 34 A's is because, for example, polling stations, uh, you know, they, 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 they have to give uh, copies and uh, form 34 A's to many of the agents and all that. And what they figured on is that they may not necessarily spend additionally on original forms. So when they give you that copy that they've printed as additional, they will indicate that they have given agent A and agent B this kind of form, and it will be entered in what we call the polling station diary. The PSD is what now, according to the regulations that were advanced in the 2017 judgment, where all other incidents or issues of visitors or officials uh, or any other happenings that happen in the polling stations are entered, and that diary is what is adduced in court. So anything that happens, whether it's a correct thing or incorrect thing, is entered into that diary. Now, <clears throat> when you look at, uh, and, and I believe possibly they've uh, uh, printed those additional forms that necessarily don't have the security features and all that. Now, that thinking is a thinking that came uh, within, uh, you know, uh, the regulatory framework of IBC. And perhaps they were figuring, how then do we do this? How do we medicate the fact that, um, uh, you know, we need uh, to do additional form 34s? And they printed, the original forms, they printed 100% based on the number, the exact number of the voters uh, in this country. They did, they did not do an additional 1%. They did not do an additional 2%. And therefore, because that paper is more expensive than this other one that they printed, yeah. and therefore they saw for us to be able then to spend less, let's print another paper. Now, we know that uh, there's nothing like 100% turnout. So also, there's the other question of spoiled votes. You understand? So in polling station A, if I come into a polling station A and the voter has spoiled the vote by law, the law then allows the presiding officer to give the voter two votes. That is also another issue. Will they give these two votes or not? But that's, our, that's up to the agents and the PO to agree because the law again addresses itself to that matter. So this one is a, a technical issue or rather a regulatory that they brought into play to be able to medicate an issue. Unfortunately, IBC have this habit of thinking in private and executing in public. So you see the execution in public. And because of our trust de deficit, we are like, uh, what is it? You know, I hope you're not trying to lie again. Yeah. You know, I, I hope you're not trying to do this much again. But again, at the end of the day, even based on the, uh, on the precedences that, uh, that we have had before, uh, the issue in 2017 was an incapacity yeah. that IBC was introduced by a third party. That's the issue of networks, as you're well aware. How are they going to medicate that issue? Now, they are saying that to prevent the KMS kit from uh, transmitting outside of the polling station, if it does not transmit in the polling station, we will switch off the kit until we get to the constituency dialing center where the kit will be switched on and the agents are going to be involved 
and the confirmation message is going to come in. So I don't think this is an issue that we need to start accusing IBC. I think what we need to do yeah. is to encourage IBC to be dialogue-centric more, to encourage the parties to be dialogue-centric more, and to stop playing out many of these issues essentially in public when we have not consulted this referee that we're supposed to be in a relationship with and understand why this decision was taken. Because, again, it's within the preview yeah. and within the jurisdiction of IBC to do many of these things. Okay. Bishop, this entire thing was explained while you were seated there. Yes. W was it satisfactory? Or is it, how do we bridge this trust deficit? Because I also heard him talking about mm. there are four presidential candidates. Mm. The duplicate, the, the one that uh, Mark is talking about, can only go six pages. Mm. Therefore, after that, it becomes a bit faint. Mm. But you still have election observers to give the form. You still have the media to give the form. You still have the poll agents to give the form, plus the four. Mm -hmm. That is already more than six. Mm. Is that what they said, and what did you hear from it while you're there? Yes, I heard. Yeah. And they took us through this process. And that's why I'm saying I am satisfied because I was there 2017 yeah. to examine the Kim skit. They ran us through, and we said, yes, if this is the way. Now, when I went to the polling station. I was the first one to use the, the, the kit. Now, the assurance that the, this morning that they are going to Mokmas yeah. and have a discussion with the parties, I am sure it will be proven. It, today they will ask as many questions and the clarity will be told so that the political parties who are actually the, the users, so to say, and the general populace will be given an answer. I think at this moment, the sobriety that we need in order to understand these things, because we have been there, and you, you realize these are emanating from the court because this was the basis of the uh, elections being thrown out. Yeah. And therefore, the IBC seemed to have gone through this in, uh, like clinically to explain. Now we want them to bring from the oven today and let the parties share the cake. Yeah. And our full responsibility, what did you find today? Ask the IBC all the question. If there is need to, to, to go and uh, through it at Bombers of Kenya, yeah. let it be today and the media will help us really greatly uh, to transmit these uh, questions and answers. And I'm sure clarity will be sought on this book. Yeah. So what we saw, you know, now we are finishing today and uh, we, we will be there in a few hours. And I hope by the time we are issuing a communique, we'll be able to uh, communicate to the Kenyans what really we have found out. But we, as far as I am concerned, truly, I am satisfied yeah. that given the, the status, you can hear people saying, the analysts are saying, let them go out yeah. and let there be a space by the media to give them and to walk them on all stages and to explain where the questions are being asked. Okay. So I think that is uh, the truth of the matter. And now, IBC, I'm sure, whenever there is um, a doctor is on stage now uh, trying to operate, I think they need sobriety. Yeah. It's not that they are hiding things, but we want them to, to bring it uh, to talk to us. Mm -hmm. So um, I would encourage that trust deficit that we have as Kenyans, let us now minimize yeah. and encourage each person in this country, even including uh, those who are vying for political um, uh, vacancies, yeah. to truly know that there is only one referee. Yes, we yeah. must challenge them, but how do they do, work, uh, do their work without our, uh, what we call, calmness? Mm -hmm. And what we are asking the, the political parties and everybody to become yeah. and let now the media mm. and the IBC yeah. show us what is it, are we satisfied, okay. at what level, yeah. so that we can grade them also. Okay. And the test of the soup is in there. 
Uh, okay, I have to take a quick break here before we come back and mm. continue this discussion. But Mark, let me bring you in as we wait for the break, the, uh, the break we're about to take. You know, just a few days ago, there were some three Venezuelans who came into the country. They were accused of having election materials that were not declared. The DCI said they're illegal in the country. And then yesterday, the Inspector General and the IBC chairperson comes out and tells people that all is well. In fact, their word was, it has been resolved. Mm. How do they bridge this uh, trust deficit when there are certain fundamental questions that they don't track back and answer? I mean, the first time you said they were here illegally, are they now here legally? Uh, did they have election material? What's going on? Trevor, you ask an amazingly good question, and I think it's the question of the hour. It is the question of the hour because, and I've said this many, many times, Trevor, today, if you left this uh, uh, building and went to your house and found a plumber in your shower, I am telling you that plumber will be arrested. Why? Because he did not declare why he is there. You do not know who sent him, whether it is your landlord, your wife, your spouse, your ex-girlfriend. You don't know. You don't know whether in, uh, while he's laying the pipes, he's putting cyanide to poison you. And this is the thing that IBC does not recognize. Anything you do in this election that is not upfront declared mm -hmm. is going to be subject to conspiracy theorizing, not only by state actors, but also by ordinary Kenyans. And this is the problem that I think has not sunk into IBC's mind. They think that Kenyans are doubting their competency. No, that's not the issue. Kenyans want a direct line of sight between my couch and IEBC. I need to understand what every form means, what a duplicate means, why it has a separate serial number. From the serial number, it is a copy of. We need to understand all of those things. Otherwise, yeah. Schrodinger's cat's rule applies, where you are both stealing and not stealing at the same time, because as long as the box is sealed and you have a radioactive material called election material in your box, trust you me, people will find issue with the IEBC, and rightfully so. And I'm here to tell Kenyans that the kind of observation mm -hmm. and, and, and raising of issues that we are doing is good for this country, mm -hmm. because it is what is going to test uh, the, 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 the IEBC to make sure they deliver. Now, for example, if they explain this Form 34s and, and Kenyans are satisfied, and we find this Form 34s, we find two uh, different Form 34s for one polling station, then we know there's something wrong with the system. Yeah. So we need to understand, and the IEBC, I am begging them to understand what we are saying. Mm. We will assume that you are good and bad at the same time for as long as you remain here hidden in a box with a radioactive substance called our elections. And we know that our elections can easily be volatile. So, IEBC, if you're not going to open up that box, if you're not going to, uh, for example, make available the KPMG report, explain yourself before you do things. Uh, tell us who Otto is and how he's going to generate these forms. Unless IEBC does so, I'm sorry, the good bishop has clearly more faith than I. Okay, let me bring in Dennis on this. Dennis, you, you had the conversation and the press conference from the Inspector General of Police and the IBC saying that all is well after they had raised questions of three Venezuelans who are here with election material. Were you convinced with that simple answer that all is well now? Uh, Trevor, uh, thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, Trevor, I sit as um, a train of trainer on uh, matters of um, election agents, chief agents, and the electioneering process. And uh, one of the things that I have done is, even with interacting with uh, senior IBC officials and other officials, election agents from uh, political parties, I realized that uh, this year we have one of the most bloated elections. And uh, of course, it comes uh, with the issue that we have uh, large formations uh, called coalitions. In one polling station, uh, the MCA elections itself has uh, even more than 25 candidates. Imagine that is paperwork at the end of the day. Imagine those are resources that are required for IBC to um, be able to adjudicate uh, that process, to be able to oversee that process. And then we are looking at, as, as an, inst at an institution that we have starved of funding for so long and then they're supposed to oversee these bloated elections. 
So I think uh, we need to really save them some slack. We need to make sure that we build their capacity. We need to make sure that uh, we have dialogue with that more. And IBC sincerely, perhaps uh, seen uh, within the media space as opaque, uh, many of us that are involved within this electioneering process, you speak to colleagues, uh, you know them, you've worked with them for a while, and they will tell you the truth at the end of the day. And uh, we just need to make sure that we establish this concept of dialogue. Coming to that police incident, we know that uh, sincerely uh, the DCI misrepresented the facts. And in misrepresentation of those facts, then cast spurious suspicions upon uh, the personality and the integrity of IBC. And why am I saying that? Because everything that was played out in the media came out as non-factual. The fact that uh, the Venezuelans had the expired passport. We know that the, Vene the Venezuelan government, because of the aspect that they are still trying to gain democracy, their parliament have extended all expired passports by five years. And uh, based on that virtue, we then gave the visa to this person. That's number one. So you disqualify, you know, the fact that uh, the passport is invalid. It's not invalid, it's valid. And uh, we know that uh, nationwide. The aspect that this person was unknown or uninvited, there was a letter that went to uh, immigration saying that this person works for IBC. So every fact that was played out in the media was uh, not true. And that's the reason why, respectfully, the Inspector General of Police came yesterday, and uh, if you looked at his posture, he said that matter is an, an issue. There is no way the Inspector General of Police would uh, talk down or throw out a critical aspect that would have injured, uh, you know, the security ethics in this country or the security laws that we have, and the immigration laws that we've put together. I sincerely think that was an unfortunate thing that was played out within the public space on wrong uh, wrong perceptions, and it was supposed to paint IBC in a wrong way. And I believe that this year should be held into account on that particular issue because it introduced a certain aspect of fragility into the elections. And as Mark said, uh, our elections are radioactive because we don't trust each other. Okay. And, uh, you know, this is where perhaps as clergy and uh, my good bishop, I'll ask him to pray for the soul of this country and for Kenyans much more so that we'll be able to trust each other and work as a united nation that is there to achieve the goals of everyone. Okay. And going into this election, Trevor, as I conclude, going into this election, we have to be ready to know that we have given a certain power, a certain trust to this IBC, and we have to have faith in them. Faith is the knowledge that you have uh, you have on the one that you have an expectation upon that they have a capacity to deliver. And in that capacity to deliver, we must know very well that perhaps our expectations may, may uh, someone's expectations may not be delivered. So uh, politicians uh, from one side and from the other must sit in the knowledge yeah. that they may have to be the ones to say, sorry, I mean, uh, uh, we lost again. Uh, I'm sorry, we lost again. And uh, we believe in the uh, decisions that the IBC has taken. I don't think there was any issue. Our elections are the most observed. Yeah. Our elections have the most agents. In fact, from a coalition perspective, the IBC officials are saying they have uh, an accreditation of one polling station having all the way up to 20 agents, Trevor. Yeah. 20 agents from the presidential to the governor, governors, senators, uh, women rep, MCAs, member of the uh, county uh, national assembly, all these are watching one voter at a time because the polling station allows one voter at a time. One voter at a time. Surely, what can go wrong okay. when you have all those uh, observers and watchers? And then when uh, technically we are trying to audit this. So right. I believe that uh, this election will have an advanced uh, aspect of, uh, of delivery and of trust and really we need to help ibc to deliver where we see there's an issue okay. this is our election this is our country and that is our independent electoral and boundaries commission this okay. is our business and we need to make sure 
that we don't introduce an injury to our business. Yeah. We strengthen that which is dear and close to us. All right, let's take a quick break here on Daybreak. When we come back, we'll read some of your feedback and then we come and talk about leadership and integrity. What is it that we are missing as a country when it comes to electing the leaders we deserve? Or do we just get the leaders we deserve? That is also another conversation. At Trevor Mbidja at Citizen TV Kenya, use the hashtag Daybreak. See you in just a bit.